Sand clocks. They are one of the coolest inventions of old history. They still work, but in order to use them correctly, you have to take care of many aspects like gravitational force, sand material and others. You see the error rate. Definitely we have something wrong with our sand clock. Of course I can use my phone as a stopwatch. But I like unique design of sand clocks. Since we are living in digital world, why not try making a digital sand clock? This is my story of how I have built one. Bismillah, I'll start with 3D printing the case. I'm going to use matrix model called MAX7219. I couldn't find separated version, this is 4 in 1, so I'm gonna cut it. The original design uses this kind of capacitive touch model for switching the power. In order to use this, we have to use electronic switch like MOSFETs, which draws more power. Since we are battery dependent, I prefer to use this kind of mechanical switch. But the design doesn't have a hole for it, so I remixed it and 3D printed it. Make sure the output is giving you enough 5 volts. Now we desolder the switch and put it to the case. Make sure the switch at the back side of the LED.
Before sticking the Arduino, make sure the LED is lighting. Now we have the most important and interesting part, the programming. After programming, I had problems with LED's orientation. It's working horizontally, we just need to rotate clockwise. You can see one variable that handles this rotation. I tried it, but it didn't work. Now, let me do it manually. It's working perfect, but when you rotate, it doesn't work, because we need to sense the rotation with accelerometer. After installing the accelerometer, it didn't seem to work. But if I supply the power from USB as well, it works fine. And I figured out that the voltage and current that we are getting from our booster wasn't enough for our accelerometer. So I replaced it with more powerful one. Now it works perfect. Before watching the final result, let me tell you about today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by BQ. They are known for manufacturing 3D printers and equipment for your 3D printer. They sent me an unusual 3D printer BQBX and asked me to make an honest review. Don't worry, I'll keep it short and brief. Once you open its box, you will see a giant screen that I have never seen in other printers before. After unboxing, setting up process is pretty easy, as usual printers. One of the most important features that I wanna tell you is that it's a special screen. This screen is so big and very customizable, starting from rotary knob LED colors to even built-in terminal that you can send custom G-code commands without connecting to your PC. This screen has special modes that you can connect Raspberry Pi directly to it, so you can use Octoprint. BQ included some special cables that will be used while connecting your Raspberry Pi to the screen. After connecting the cables as shown in instructions manual, you are ready to go. Now you have Octodash that is directly connected to Octoprint which is located in your 3D printer. You can have full experience of Octodash with this touchscreen. Of course, you can still remotely connect to your 3D printer using OctoPi Web UI. As well as this printer has so tiny and lightweight direct drive extruder. One of the drawbacks of this printer is it's bad. It's flexible and spring steel sheet, but I had some difficult times with warping corner of my 3D prints. But no problem, you can change it to another material easily. If you want to know 3D print quality, I 3D printed all objects in this video with this printer, so you saw the quality. I love this 3D printer for its unique features and direct drive lightweight extruder. My final conclusion is, if you are a person who wants to modify 3D printer and use Octoprint with the Raspberry Pi, I would suggest you to buy this printer. Because of its unique features, large screen, direct drive, lightweight extruder and many more. That was my brief review, now we continue to the video.
Unfortunately, we had errors with this hand clock also. It's due to programming and limitations of Arduino Nano. But I would prefer this digital sand clock over the original one, because of modern and elegant design and these sweet LEDs. And don't worry, this timing error can be fixed with little bit debugging. How about you? Which sand clock did you like? Tell me in comments below. Thank you for watching. See you next time, inshallah.